everyone, my name is Emily, and today I'm going to be doing a 2016 recap. Whether that has to do with art, or my life, or magic serendipitous happenstances, whatever it may be, I'm just going to kind of try to recap my 2016 for you guys, and also kind of for myself, as kind of a self-reflection of sorts. Because a lot has happened this year, and I know for a lot of people, 2016 was just pretty fucking shitty, but mine was really great, actually, and I don't mean to brag when I say this, I'm just very thankful that my 2016 ended up being pretty joyous and filled with happy occasions, more happy occasions than bad ones, because there were quite a few bumps in the road this year, but I feel like the good outweighs the bad by a substantial amount. So let's go ahead and jump right in. In case you guys haven't noticed, I am playing some of my personal favorite videos and pieces and moments from this year that have all been on my channel. Just something to kind of have in the background. I did have a painting, but I thought it would be a little bit more appropriate to play the videos opposed to just a random painting. So unfortunately, what kicked off 2016 for me was a very toxic, codependent, friend shit, pseudo relation shit, horrible relations is what I'm getting to. And you can learn all about that in this video right here. But to sum it up very, very briefly, I was close to a almost 40 year old drug addict who came from a very affluent background. He went to a nice college and he's kind of the prime example of a very unexpected drug addict, someone who, you know, they always say anybody be can become a drug addict. And I'm not sitting here bashing drug addicts because it is a disease and I myself was a drug addict in the past. I'm not going to get into that right now. I have so many feelings about that. But the point is that he is a drug addict that I don't think will ever truly heal because he doesn't really have to. He has a lot of people in his life that act as constant enablers to this behavior. He'd go through these cycles of using drugs and then finding people who would help him financially, mentally, emotionally. Then he, like a lotus flower reaching through the mud towards the sun, would get clean and sober and then ditch those people, relationships, friends, what have you, that helped him along the way, get this holier-than-thou attitude and turn people against him, and then the cycle would start all over again. And I ended up being one of the people who was used and dragged down into that cycle with him, which actually was a very good thing. And let me tell you why. This was a very extreme example of what has been happening to me my entire life. Now, for some reason, I had had an attraction to people who needed help. I was always the person that gave advice. I was always the person that had money to give or rides to give or love to give or food to give. I was the giver. I have always been that kind of person even if it has put me out and unfortunately when you are that person you leave yourself wide open for being taken advantage of and let me tell you I have been taken for so many GD rides in my life I, I can't this is why I have so many sketchbook story times is because I was stupid enough to not have the foresight to see that when I'm attracted to people like this people are going to use me duh Oh my god. And after my communications with this man finally ended and he made me feel like a piece of shit, like I was the user and I was the one who was aggressive and horrible and treated him terrible after all the money and rides and emotional support I'd given him, I had this glowing otherworldly epiphany like, Emily, wait, you're not the bad guy. You're just a fucking idiot and you make horrible decisions. And immediately, in that moment, a wall went right up. Now, don't get me wrong. I already have kind of a wall around my private life. I tend not to share things about myself with people I just kind of know. I, I really kind of reserve that stuff for people who I'm very close with. But this was a different kind of wall. This was a wall of like that blocked me from other people almost. I started to realize that I took too many people in. I took too much baggage off of other people for me to kind of hold, and it was weighing me down. I was making the poor decisions. Now, Aaron, he's a bad guy, and he's always going to be probably a pretty shitty person. And I'm not going to sit here and say that there aren't redeeming qualities about him, but his decisions 
towards other people and his selfishness and his narcissism, that's not going to change probably ever. His personality type did not mesh well with mine, and he gave me plenty of red flags to choose from when we first met, and that was my responsibility to walk away, not his. So the cautionary tale that I'm trying to get out there that I took way too many years to learn and I'm trying to get it to as many of you as possible is this. If there is someone in your life that makes constant and repeated threats to your well-being, whether it be perceived or real, if you are feeling anything less than comfortable with this person, you need to walk away. Now, obviously, there are plenty of special situations where this doesn't apply, but to those who are able to, I urge you to walk away. You are 100% in control with who you are surrounded by. And I understand that there are certain times when you are not, but at the end of the day, you choose who you are friends with, you choose who you are in a relationship with, you choose who you surround yourself with. So walk away from those who make you feel anything less than comfortable more than 20% of the time because, you know, friends fight, that kind of thing. There are always exceptions to this rule. But for those who can, take your life into your own hands and make decisions that are going to ultimately lead to a better road. Even if it doesn't at the moment, make the decision that you know is going to take you to a better place or at least away from a place that makes you unhappy. Our life is nothing but a series of decisions and we are guaranteed to make a shit ton of bad ones. But for those that you can control, grab them by the balls. This horrible experience led me to this YouTube channel. I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to start over. I wanted to go back to basics, to my roots, to what I knew I was good at. This YouTube channel was a way for me to come on here and be silly and goofy and not feel the pressures of everyday life, not feeling uncomfortable to be myself in front of people. Because in reality, when it all started, it was just a camera and me and some anonymous people on the internet. And it has grown so much, I'm just kind of surprised by all of it. I mean, I figured I would get a few friends from doing this, but I never thought I would be able to network professionally the way I am able to now. I, I never thought I would have this amazing friend group, this, this artful family. I, I never expected this was going to become something greater. I always thought it would just be a way for me to let off some steam, and it definitely still is, but there's a little bit more of a schedule to it now. And I have no problem with that. If you know me, you know I love schedules and organization, so I, I just, I never thought that I would be able to do something that I love with such tremendous payback. And the payback is you guys. You are all such wonderful, unique, loving people. I get emails from you guys all the time, and every single email melts my heart. And I'm sorry I'm not able to get back to all of them, but you know, I always want to craft a, a unique response, and, and that's not always an option, especially with my new life and how crazy busy it is. But I read them, I read them, and they all touch me, my heart, and make me cry. And it, yeah, it just trust me, your emails, your comments, everything, they, they mean the world to me. That is the best payback I, I could have ever asked for. Starting this YouTube channel also meant that I wanted to turn over a new leaf. I don't know if you guys knew this, but for the longest time I was kind of stuck in California. I didn't have any family out there. I was just living with my ex-boyfriend who I ended up, you know, I'm, I'm close with. He's my friend and very amicable, so that's why I was allowed to stay there. But I was ready to try and, and branch out. And that included going back to Omaha, Nebraska, where I spent a very large part of my childhood. My mother had moved there two years prior to me moving, so I was ready to take that next big step. That was 1,700 miles away from everything I've ever known, essentially. And, you know, Omaha has changed so much since I was a kid, so I wouldn't know left from right. It was a big decision, but I was gunning up to do it already. So at the end of January, I flew out here to enjoy a, a week and a half with my mom and my stepdad. And I ended up reconnecting with a very unusual person. And that would actually be someone who had kind of babysat me while I grew up. And that 
person is actually my husband, Mike Artful. Um, we didn't really re-reconnect in January. He just kind of showed up at a bar and we talked a little bit and added each other on Facebook and we kind of left it there. But when I did come back in April to scout out some apartments and things, we ended up really reconnecting and with the help of a little bit of liquid courage, I gave him my number. Um, he walked me out to the car with my mom and he picked me up and squoze me so tight. I knew immediately that this guy, this guy is into me. He squoze me and spun me around and it was really cute. And then we went on our first date and then another date. And then we fell totally in love pretty quickly. It was um, a slow go to the friendship and then just boom, love. And... I'm married to that man now. I have known Mike probably for about 11 years. I'm, I'm not, don't check me on that. I probably should have thought about that before I started this video, but I, I can't believe it. I, I'm just very shocked at the series of events leading up to meeting him, moving here, falling in love. Like it was just a crazy whirlwind between April and now, really. From then till now, I pretty much did nothing but traveling. Mike and I could hardly stand to be more than like three weeks away from each other, and that was still pushing it. So I have so much more respect for people who can maintain long distance relationships where they can't see their spouse for months, sometimes even years. It, I just, I don't know how you guys do it. We couldn't do it. We pussied out and spent way too much money on travel, but it, it doesn't matter. The, the money I can earn back. I am so thankful that the stars were able to align where I was able to just so happen to meet Mike. He never comes to that bar really. It was like once every few months kind of thing and he just ended up being there when I was there. And think of it, I wouldn't even have been in Nebraska if it weren't for that horrible situation with Aaron and that epiphany. Like I am just kind of in awe sometimes how a series of events can lead to one thing to another. And I love stories about how couples meet through crazy scenarios. And, and I just think, I just think this year, I know it was crappy for a lot of people, but it was really, really an eye opener for me. And yes, I did have some pretty meh experiences, but those meh experiences made me grow as a person. So they can't be all that bad, right? I could go on about these little bumps and things that happened throughout this year, but I really wanted to just talk about the two major things, and that was my experience with Aaron and what that did to me, to my experience with my now husband and how something so beautiful can come from something so not great. And I... That's what I strive to do with this channel. I try to give you guys hope through my sketchbook story times, whether they be wacky or dramatic, something bad is always going to happen. It, it, it's just guaranteed people are going to die, you're going to lose things, things are going to change, but things always get better. There cannot be good without the bad. And, and I want to stress this so much because I feel like it, it weighs so heavy on people when they are in a rut. They feel hopeless, like it's never going to be good again. You want to know why I know that? Because I've been there. Because everyone has been there. It always gets better. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Just look at my light. My light didn't come for seven years. I had seven years of terrible times. And there were a few times in those seven years that I wanted to give up. I wanted to just say, I'm done. I want to go to sleep and I don't want to wake up. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And there were times when I almost did. But I hung on. I hung on to that tiny little bit of hope. And I, I don't know why I had that tiny little bit of hope, but I did. And I hung on. And I know there are going to be bad times ahead of me, but I have this collection of people that I have decided to keep in my life, the good people, the people I care about and I know care about me. I have those people now because I've made a series of good decisions along with the bad. I'm stronger now. And I never thought I would be here, but I'm here. Don't ever lose hope. Hope is what's going to drive you. Whether it be hope 
in a goal in art or a hope in a goal of a family. Hope, want, aspiration, desire, those things are going to take you to do great things. I'm starting to cry, so I'm trying not to, but that was my 2016. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being the amazing people that you are. And don't ever lose hope. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys next year.